of such a session. Our principal sir will join shortly for some technical issue. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to express my deep gratitude to be a part of this program. And let me introduce our honorable HOD ma'am, Professor Anamika Chakraborty. I request to our honorable HOD ma'am to deliver the welcome address. Thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dipta. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, on behalf of uh, our principal of the college, we I uh, apologize because uh, he is having some technical issues for which uh, he'll be a little late. But he has asked me to start the program and continue with it. He'll be joining shortly. Uh, so today we are uh, uh, we are uh, thankful and honored to have among us um, a very a very renowned uh, poet and academician, uh, Dr. Sham Sudhakar, as a part of uh, as a part of our uh, lecture series, which is a part of the MOU, which we have. Which the College of Bukula has signed with uh, St. Thomas College, Trishur, Department of English, Kerala. And, uh, and especially, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Sudhakar because of his, of his initiative in, uh, in uh, uh, materializing this MOU with the college. And uh, this is our first such venture with uh, any college, <coughs> Sri Krishna College venture. So it is always a special uh, honor for us. And, and now I have the honor to introduce our today's uh, speaker, Dr. Sham Sudhakar, Assistant Professor, uh, St. Thomas College, Tishu, who is uh, also not only a very young academician, but also a very uh, well-known and a well-awarded uh, uh, bilingual poet. He writes both in his native Malayalam as well as in English. Uh, and uh, he has, Dr. Sudhakar has done his doctoral uh, research on beat generation poets, <coughs> now teaches uh, in the St. Thomas College. He has been uh, very well published, both uh, here and abroad. He has not only his academic papers, but his poems as well. He has been translated into, his poems has been translated into a number of languages like Hindi, Tamil, English, uh, this uh, French, uh, Chinese, to name a few. He has uh, gone on invited readings, both across this country as well as abroad. And some of his uh, famous collections, poem collections, are uh, The Dam, then uh, poems of uh, collected poems of Shab Sudhakar, Drenched by the Sun, Slicing the Moon, which uh, you will like it. I, I'm sure you're going to like, enjoy it a lot. It's a very uh, innovative idea. It's a, it's a video rendering of his, of his poems. It's beautiful. And then the last meteor. So we are, uh, we are very honored to have him today among us to share his views on poetry and its appreciation, which is today's topic. And without... Uh, uh, which I am sure will be very enlightening to all of you students and uh, as well as we, the teachers. And without uh, wasting very much of time, I would directly like to invite Dr. Sudhakar to please uh, start his deliberations today. Um, over to you, Sham. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, uh, Dr. Anamika Chakravarti, for that. The beautiful introduction. Um, I hope I'm audible now. <clears throat> so um, let me begin my talk with a uh, with a poem by because this is basically a uh, talk on poetry and with a poem of uh, C. P. Kawafi, which I love. Uh, I mean, Kawafi's poems. And uh, he has written, and Kawafi, I mean, uh, I'm sure that you must be knowing about uh, C.P. Kawafi. He's a poet from Greece, and he's a modernist poet. And he has written quite a number of uh, poems. 
and he's one of the influential figure of modernist poetry and also people like T.S. Eliot were influenced by Kawafi. And there's a poem by him called Janiki Thakka. Maybe you're, the title you are familiar with. Yeah, there is a, there's a novel in the same title. So the, <clears throat> the poem opens like this. Um, As you set forth to Ithaka, hope the journey is a long one. So when you when you are about to go for a journey, when you are when you are starting a journey, actually hope the journey is a long one. It is basically you you all know that the story of Ulysses, Odysseus, and the man just because he has traveled traveled a lot, and now we are now in the position of not able to travel a lot. <clears throat> Though I had a couple of opportunities recently to uh, to travel, <clears throat> I'm I'm really uh, happy or I would say privileged for that travel. But uh, at the same time, most of us are uh, away from the the idea of travel nowadays because we are all in the in the same uh, trap of pandemic. And I hope that we will overcome this and we will regain our our traveling capacity soon <clears throat> so this this poem is basically about a travel and it's a travel of ulysses and he says as you set forth to ithaca actually kawafi the narrator is saying as as you set forth to ithaca hope the journey is a long one just as this guy ulysses earlier traveled started traveling from uh, after these issues, all these um, uh, socio-political issues happened in Troy. He just moves to Utaka, his his um, his homeland, to see his um, wife and maybe a small child. So Telemachus, yeah. <clears throat> so he will never reach the oh, say maybe some fifteen years or something. He uh, was not able to reach his country. And this this whole travel from one place to the other makes him Ulysses. Make him the he's not just a king, as Tennyson in his uh, in his poem, famous poem, Ulysses says. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not just a king, but I'm a traveler. So in that way, this king is better than no. This, this travel is better than this this idea of king. So that is the basically. A travel inside literature or inside poetry means <clears throat> that how we uh, we people read and why we read is really important. And then reading is of course a kind of travel from one place to the other to see different worlds, to see various people. I mean, though we are not able to uh, meet anybody in these days. I mean, because we are all locked in a in a particular room or a house or yeah, uh, in a, in, a, in a place, we are able to read and write. So that's a beautiful, uh, yeah, yeah. That's of course a beautiful thing, though it is not as beautiful as the the real travel. Of course, this this idea. But I'm I'm just thinking without this idea of reading or uh, expanding our horizon, what will we do? Because it is, it is of course a kind of blessing. So enjoying art, people nowadays. Uh, recently, I I read an article uh, saying that uh, India now need more doctors and uh, nurses than writers. So I was uh, talking to uh, a friend of mine about this, and uh, this idea of tomorrow, a better tomorrow comes when we do something today and it depends upon the idea what we are doing now i mean the present situation <laughs> will of course reflects our tomorrow so if definitely if needed because we are always keeping ourselves away from people nowadays we are moving away from one person to the other and for for our for our safety in course but of course we need that 
but at the same time we are connected through internet and uh, through books we, we are, books are providing us new world the world of love humanity and all such things so definitely this idea of art and uh, reading should be there and <clears throat> coming to my topic basically today i am going to uh, talk about poetry of of kerala like how i started reading and uh, reading poetry and started writing poetry and what was the uh, the gradual progress when i was i was uh, when i first published my book uh, <coughs> my my first book and then later now and what are the differences that i uh, i i saw there are there, there are a few actually because when i started writing mostly it was on the print media <coughs> basically there were quite a number of journals were we can publish uh, like madhubhumi weekly and uh, madhyamam weekly and malayalam weekly bhasha poshini and kala komadi were a few i mean mainstream magazines and there are quite a number of uh, uh, little magazines as well <laughs> so uh during that time if you want to become a writer you should publish in either in your these magazines so that was the major challenge of the writer during that time uh that time means uh, i started writing in 2000 maybe during that time the beginning of 20th century <laughs> and this uh, uh what is called this um uh, so, though facebook were, was the during that time i, I think so or could was of course the and uh, facebook came a little uh, later i guess <coughs> or facebook became popular a little later so then slowly uh, this uh, what is called uh, this written uh text the idea of written text of publishing in a in a proper reputed journal started shifting to new media and internet and few uh, i mean even poetry became a few text messages i mean sharing poetry in a, in a short forms like haiku kind of forms for well, several people like veera guti and all started writing in that form and vs nishad was i mean he started writing his small stories in in sms forms and uh, what i'm trying to suggest is that when technology comes up from one side because that was a time when mobile phone became popular <laughs> and when technology came to one side and the forms of literature started shifting from one thing for from the from the traditional print journal to to uh, slowly the, the the very form of the of literature poetry especially started shifting from one place to the other so uh, earlier it was this this text form and then slowly it started shifting from sms then the the uh, as you all know that it, it is like um, uh, 120 words or something like uh, 120 alphabets not words alphabets uh, should be there in a in a text message so poetry uh, people started writing poems in short forms and sending through sms and then it became a little more when the uh, when the when they started posting it on facebook and then that uh, wave become has uh, uh uprise and people started writing in blogs and all then the the that that short form of poetry became an elaborate form now uh, what's happening in in kerala is that the i mean poetry with its um, i mean precise and short form has become a little more loose and elaborate so people start because the space was not a big problem in when you when you uh, write it in blog or something so people start writing whatever that comes into their mind just like <coughs> uh, uh, virginia wolf do or joyce do like the the idea of stream of consciousness was also coming back to, to poetry and uh, then yeah of course there are quite a number of problems that we can discuss later about this idea of editing and like lack of editing in the online uh, poetry and all such forms were there <laughs> but uh, apart from this traditional written forms there are several other forms in poetry especially in southern parts of, and of course like uh, in Bombay, in india of course because uh, <clears throat> indian culture earlier 
uh, as we all know, it was, I mean, we have a strong tradition of oral culture, oral tradition. So uh, there were quite a number of uh, oral bonds and orality was one of the uh, major way of expressing um, our bonds. So <clears throat> we had a strong tradition of not just written form, uh, like poems like Nave Rupata. There was a uh, uh, there were quite a number of snake songs and uh, other other things, which is very much related to culture. Actually, not just poetry. I mean, uh, it was not considered as poetry. But now, when we read it from the 20th, 21st century, of course, we can see richness of poetry or roots of poetry in Malayalam poetry in uh, songs like Sarpa Partival, that is Parta means songs, such, uh, such songs. Maybe uh, one of uh, my I mean, friend scholar, the scholar, uh, she's here. Uh, I think maybe I, I have asked because I'm not able to, I mean, I'm not so happy with my own singing. So I, I thought I will ask her to sing a, uh, a, a Sarpa Partival for the, for the audience. Pringa, are you here? Hello. Hello. Ah, hello, hello Prenka. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, let me sing a, a Pandapuli song for you. Uh, it, it starts like Ashtanagangale, the line. Am I audible? Yes. Ashtanagangale. No, Priyanka is working on, on this area actually, poetry and orality, and especially this uh, snake songs of uh, South India. So that's a actually it's a it's a culture. Uh, and during some seasons, uh, the people of this particular caste will come to the upper caste and couple of upper caste people's house, and then they they recite it uh, like. I mean, the mornings, in the daytimes, or in the evenings, they come. Um, uh, they come to their house and then recite it and get some money. So, but the the basic roots of Malayalam poetry not just lies in the in the printed form, but this kind of uh, the, the 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 very folk. And I'm sure that it is not just the case of Malayalam. That in in almost all the cultures. This this idea of drag getting from the the tradition the folk tradition was very much the in in uh, Indian poetry, <laughs> and this this basically shows that it is uh, one of the major roots of contemporary poetry. And another ma major root is of course in the modernist European poem poems that I'm quite aware of that. But I'm saying that one of the roots one of the roots of this Indian poetry is from the traditional folklore, <laughs> folklore tradition, and this idea of reality. So while, while because in Kerala, when I started writing, <coughs> uh, there was a time when these poetry readings, there were quite a number of poetry recitals happening during that time. And uh, poets gather in one particular place, even like elderly poets uh, were there, like Akitam and Vishnu Aranandam Budri, all were there, and they will get the first chance, and we, all the youngsters, will, will get the last chance. So 
uh, it is it is almost like a, a big hierarchy and we were not so happy with that but what to do and that that idea and then uh, they they all appreciated that that uh, unhappiness will go when these uh, i mean great poets earlier poets will appreciate us <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> so that that was uh, that was time yeah so and nowadays this this traditional reading of poems were not so popular nowadays uh, though there are a few uh, readings but i am happy to tell you that during this corona time there were quite a number of poetry reading online and especially in the, the in that new app what is it called uh, there's a new app no uh, has come with you you can uh, go to the uh, rooms and then talk uh, what is it called clubhouse clubhouse Club excellent 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 thank you thank you kila clubhouse and there were quite a number of readings were happening and uh, i think that is just like a revival or or, or of all these uh, writers gathering uh, with with their sounds not their body but with their sounds like the poem of nightingale by keats just you can hear the sound and that beautiful artwork is is uh, reclaiming reclaiming its its strength and um, serenity and uh, during the uh, during the 90s we have uh, witnessed quite a number of poets such as oily cooper madhusudan nayar and all these people started reciting their poems in video cassettes or audio cassettes as audio cassettes and that was a that was a big tradition even madhusudan nayar has uh, uh, recited poems of vaila or vaila ramor and the like especially this i mean more lyrical poems and they they have uh, made a, a particular uh, style of their own and so many people started uh, Uh, started uh, what is called uh, yeah, got inspiration by by uh, from all these people and they started reciting as well and uh, one of the peculiarity was oindi's nasal sound and when oindi started reciting he has a kind of nasal sound and all the people after him started reciting and they also they imitated that the same nasal sound of this uh, oindi pur so uh such things happened and there was a particular style when uh, there was a program called mambaram happened in one of the television channels and so many youngsters started coming and reciting poetry so uh i will i will uh, switch on a video for you to show how the the modern malayalam poets got this particular tradition actually tradition of this orality i am showing a video of d vinay chandran he is a uh, he, he is no more now is a modernist poet in kerala who got uh, of course this oral tradition and this orality uh, from this this folk tradition i will uh, shall i just play please bear with me for a second ഓർമ്മകളിലേക്കുള്ള തിരിച്ചുപോക്ക് എന്നാൽ വീട്ടിലേക്കുള്ള വഴിയാണ് പിറന്ന മണ്ണ് ഉപേക്ഷിച്ച് ആ വിളി പലപ്പോഴും ഉത്തരമാവുന്ന ഓർമ്മകളുടെ കുത്തൊഴുക്ക് വീട്ടിലെ കല്ലോ വിളിക്കുന്നു തുമ്പയും കാട്ടുകിളിയും കടത്തു വള്ളങ്ങളും വീട്ടിൽ നിന്നല്ലോ ഇറങ്ങി നടക്കുന്നു തോറ്റവും ചിങ്ങ നിലാവും കരച്ചിലും വീട്ടിലെ കല്ലോ വിളിക്കുന്നു തുമ്പയും കാട്ടുകിളിയും കടത്തു വള്ളങ്ങള് വീട്ടിൽ നിന്നല്ലോ ഇറങ്ങി നടക്കുന്നു തോറ്റവും തോറ്റവും ചിങ്ങനിലാവും കരച്ചിലും ചിങ്ങം പിറന്നല്ലോ പൊന്നു ചിങ്ങം ചിങ്ങത്തിരുവോണ മാസമല്ലോ ഓണം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ പണ്ട് കേരളത്തിന്റെ കാർഷികോത്സവാ ഇടവപ്പാതിക്കും തുലാവർഷത്തിനും ഇടയ്ക്ക് ചിങ്ങും കന്നിയും പ്രസന്ന മധുരമായ ഓക്കെ 
see. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, so I just should, though you know, don't know the language, I thought you will at least enjoy the, the sound of poetry. So that was by a modernist writer, D. Vinayandran. And the important thing is that it appeared in Asia at a channel, a television channel. So TV had audio, uh, audio clippings or audio cassettes. Television has taken this literature in a, in a new form and brought um, certain things. It was uh, in the United States that so many writers of the 50s and 60s got much popularity through television, though there were uh, uh, quite a number of uh, writers in the in the 40s, especially people like Dylan Thomas and uh, yeah, several uh, Lanson Hughes and Dylan Thomas started reciting their poems in, in uh, audio cassettes, whereas uh, writers such as Allen Ginsberg and uh, Jack Kerouac through their video, through their television uh, appearance, started rocking like a rock star. And they drew literature in new forms. Other than the, uh, the I mean, it is, it is actually a, um, a revolutionary change in literature because, uh, uh, because literature started using this technology, actually. Uh, like uh, how Walter Benjamin says, this idea of technology, I mean, how literature started using the, the, the idea of technology and taking its aura into a new level, into a, into a different level. Because uh, people who read literature uh, and people who understand literature earlier had this uh, aura of, of intellectuals, but now with this popular medium like radio and television, they started actually it started communicating literature poetry started communicating with the with the common man with the, the public the mass uh, it has become a mass culture so that was a that was a huge shift in in, in poetry <laughs> during that time and uh, when i uh, when i uh, actually came to uh, know more about this video culture uh, actually it was when i was in uh, chennai then a friend of mine, who when I was in the university, a friend of mine came to me and we started discussing about the connection between this, uh, this oral tradition and also the new visual forms. A friend of mine asked me, then why can't we do that, uh, do such an experiment by uh, placing poetry in a, in, a, in a new way? Because, I mean, what he is saying that the traditional, the traditional class teachers actually uh, Try to uh, try to make poetry into just images, metaphors, similes, and and so on. So I'm sure that we are all tired with such uh, practices or such and close analysis of words. But this was a uh, this was uh, during that time. It was I uh, we just made an experiment to uh, to say that poetry is not just uh, what is called uh, try. I mean. Uh, uh, just to decipher the meaning out of out of a sentence or um, or something, but it, it should communicate with the heart. That's the uh, that's the point I wanted to make because poetry is not just a uh, I mean puzzle or something that you want to find out something or it's not a Rubik's cube that you you fix it into a particular color or particular meaning, but it is something else that you should go inside that you should melt inside that because. Uh, it's of course a, a, a way of life, just like any other thing, just like the plants, how the plant grow or how the how the snow fall. It is almost like that. Poetry is 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 something to be experienced. Not poetry is not just that you you are you are trying to uh, get the meaning or what is I mean trying to say that okay this this is a particular political poem about this particular thing and it is a great poem because it has some political overtones or it is a it is a it is a it's not a good uh, work because it doesn't have a political overtone it is not like that poetry is 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 something else it should be felt from the from the from the heart, with the heart, because not just poetry. I think every art form has this emotional connect. It should be understood with a with an open heart. So <clears throat> we thought of just taking 
uh, it is not that we have uh, uh, the only one who did this, uh, but so many people were trying and we were just experimenting with that. And uh, shall I play a couple of uh, poems? Uh, is it okay? Shall I play? From Slicing the Moon, actually, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So uh, it is. It is. It is called as slicing the moon. The uh, work is called as slicing the moon, and uh, I'm, I will show you uh, maybe one or two uh, videos of different poems. The first one that I'm going to show you is teacup, and the second one is about uh, suicide. And maybe I will show you one more video. Third one, uh, it's about uh, a dancer. So uh, you can see the three mixture one is the in the first form actually uh, I'm, I'm telling you like i don't have much uh, i i never had much role in the in the visualizing because this was the idea that when a poet writes something the poet has that visualization in in, in his of her mind and when somebody else is recreating that that person will have that visualization in the same way, readers will, of course, when you read that particular thing, it is not just what poet said. You will, of course, connect a particular poem with in your own way, in your understanding. You will place a particular poem in your own space. So that is how poetry works. So I will switch it on. Encycles her and the handbag. As her waves roll and break against the other side of the cup, the a man, a man comes after, comes her, after her in my cup, my cup, my cup. Where did she dissolve to? Anxiously, he searched for her. I did the same, looking into the cup. The cup and I, both of the same clay. Crouching demurely in the cup, she tints my desire with cardamom vapors. A black bag dangles from the handle of the cup. All the pride of beauty emerged the
Whenever I attempt suicide, somebody disturbs the milkmaid calling, the postman climbing the stairs, Janu bursting into clean, the thief sneaking behind the dark well, the unexpected blackout, the late tedious trains, the ever ready to help room boy, the traffic police calculating the precise future of speed, their unending signs. Envious joy when I learn of several suicides from the papers. A farmer, a school kid, a family, a nation, alone and together, all the lucky ones succeed. A girl of 18 does it 18 times. Sages mortalize themselves by free will. But someone interrupts whenever I try. Yesterday, there was a documentary on various reasons for suicides. I wonder, do the satellites panting, sniffing, capture the minute workings of mind, like video reports on luminous castles in the great depths of ocean, and the snowman who walks from peaks to the clouds, step by step, and disappears. When millions of secrets fly crisscross like waves, invisible when machines in their billions remain hidden to lick them up wouldn't there be a place for the lost souls of my ancestors to hide this longing to end myself is no longer a secret everyone knows everything without any secrets i become transparent i wonder am i made of glass today when all shielding palm umbrellas of the Maya crossing rain, field, river, hill have melted in the towns like the man who metamorphosed in a tale. I wish from tomorrow I were a black sea turtle. She wishes to carve a sculpture from stone and wood. In the rain, she carves letters. Under the full moon, she carves the dance of Tripura Sundari. Into rivers, clouds, and waterfalls, she calls purity, light, simplicity. Within the ocean, she calls moments. From each ray of the sun, she carves a man and into each of his eyes the pulse of the sun. Drawing the blueprints on the leaves of palms and the sands of streams. She carves the ages in memories. In fire, she carves butterflies. Still, the city edges on madness. And hunger 
hides on the other side of night. She cows depth in the figureless, food in the figured, and the cry of a child in the heart. Now she wishes to call a ship from stone and wood. A sailor with unshadowed face arises from the ship. Long arms bearing the sun, he swims over sunken sculptures. He swims over sunken sculptures. Through mighty waves, seeking his sculptor. With his fingers in hers, she draws a new orbit for the moon. Yes, you are audible. Okay, thank you. So, uh, this was an attempt made uh, by us. Um, so, there, maybe later if we want to discuss uh, something on this, we can. So, this is actually, I, I, as I told you, um, when, the, when the visual culture was uh, was coming up with with a, with, a, with the strong wings, we we started thinking that. Poetry could be uh, from its traditional, what is called, interpretation of uh, a classroom interpretation. It could be, it could be actually something else. <clears throat> because I, I said this because recently, of recent, uh, uh, when I was uh, going through a poem, and <clears throat> then uh, I asked a friend to ask that particular poet. Uh, about to 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 to, uh, to 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 know what she has intended in that particular form, and then uh, she said it is just a metaphor of death. It's just a metaphor of death. I was actually asking not about that metaphor or simile or uh, that thing that I can I, I can interpret, but there should be a, a basically a primary meaning of understanding. Then only it could be either a metaphor or a, a particular uh, met metaphor or simile or whatever it is. That is that is a secondary way of of uh, thinking that the the readers should get it from from it. It is not that you already fix certain meaning to a particular thing and then you go forward to attain that particular thing. It's not so. Art never work in that way. Art actually art should take the reader. To a particular, uh, to its own, its own ways, and actually, it's a, it's, it's like a, uh, like the the mind of the reader is merging with the art, and it's actually that then only that magic of a, a work of art reveals, and it will take you up to a, uh, to a, to a, to an elevated position. So there are uh, quite a number of uh, uh, readings uh, also, like yesterday, uh, I, I thought may, maybe later I will show it to you because I was, uh, yesterday I got uh, from my publisher 
uh, a new reading of uh, quite a number of uh, writers like Adam uh, Zagalisky, the Polish writer, or uh, Thomas Franstromer, and uh, several readers, several writers who wrote a particular poem earlier, and now during this pandemic time, so many people were rereading those poems, just like uh, they have written that particular poem in a totally different context, and now that poem is uh, very much, um, um, I mean, sounds beautiful in the time of pandemic, just like we read Shakespeare in a new way, like uh, 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 the songs of Shakespeare, Shakespeare were, uh, were read in the African slam poetry style, like that is a that's a uh, totally different uh, style that this this uh, uh, I mean the very Shakespearean style or that Elizabethan uh, style of poetry I mean, with, with some rhythm and rhyme was totally taken away to uh, in an in an African uh, slam poetry reading. <laughs> so that is. Uh, that is, of course, a new way of uh, thinking or reading uh, a particular literature, and of course, it is highly uh, political in its because Shakespeare was never thinking about this uh, African uh, slam kind of poetry. When later he will be adapted into such forms, but while adapting Shakespeare into this kind of forms, this kind of orality, oral culture, he is of course can very well identify be identified as uh, a, a political reading of William Shakespeare. In the same way, uh, in India also there are uh, quite a number of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, poetry slams, I don't know in, uh, in in your place particularly, but I'm sure uh, that Calcutta has a quite a number of uh, slam poetry happening in Calcutta, Mumbai uh, and major cities, but in villages I'm, I'm not sure whether it has uh, arrived that slam poetry. Maybe I will uh, show you one of the uh, slam poetries and then maybe we will go for discussion because it is almost uh, an hour. So I will uh, put that video to just to show you like how uh, poetry, different poetry readings are happening. exactly what love looked like in seventh grade. Even though I hadn't met love yet, if love had wandered into my homeroom, I would have recognized him at first glance. Love wore a hemp necklace. I would have recognized her at first glance. Love wore a tight French braid. Love played acoustic guitar and knew all my favorite Beatles songs. Love wasn't afraid to ride the bus with me. And, and I, I knew. knew. I just must be searching the wrong classroom. Just must be checking the wrong hallway. She was there. I was sure of it. If only I could find him. But, but when, when love, love finally showed, showed up, she had a bowl cut. He wore the same clothes every day for a week. <laughs> <laughs> love hated the bus. Love didn't know anything about the Beatles. Instead, Instead, every time I tried to kiss love, our, our teeth, teeth got, got in the way. way. Love became the reason I lied to my parents. I'm going to... Ben's house. <laughs> love had terrible rhythm on the dance floor, but made sure we never missed a slow song. Love waited by the phone because she knew if her father picked up, it would be... Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I guess they hung up. And love grew. Stretched like a trampoline. Love changed. Love disappeared. Slowly, like baby teeth. 
losing parts of me I thought I needed. Love vanished like an amateur magician. Everyone could see the trap door but me. Like a flat tire. There were other places I had planned on going, but, but my, my plans, plans didn't, didn't matter. matter. Love stayed away for years. And when love finally reappeared, I barely recognized him. Love smelled different now, had darker eyes. A broader back. Love came with freckles I didn't recognize. New birthmarks, a softer voice. Now there were new sleeping patterns. New favorite books. Love had songs that reminded him of someone else. Songs love didn't like to listen to. So, so did, did I. I. But we found a park bench that fit us perfectly. We found jokes that make us laugh. And now... No, they don't bite. No, they aren't vampires that they'll bite you and you'll turn. No, auntie, they aren't Satan worshippers. No, they won't force your child into being gay. No, they won't come live in your closet. No, pink and purple doesn't look gay on you. No, just because you prefer shirts over skirts doesn't mean he'll mistake you for a lesbian. No, he won't have a crush on you, bro. No, she doesn't hit on me. Yes, they're just like us. Question, how does one look gay? Do you have to be covered in rainbows? Do you have to dress like Lady Gaga? Like what? I don't understand. I'm assuming Ellen DeGeneres, Ruby Rose and Neil Patrick Harris are all really bad dressers because nobody wants to look gay. When was the last time you heard a guy wearing a black shirt say, dude, does this make me look straight? Why is it that every time I'm holding my girl best friend's hand in public, I'm being told that it's illegal? Hi government, talking to you. Oh look, section 377 is here again. You don't know what that is? That is your freedom taken away in a nation known for fighting for freedom. That is your freedom taken away in a nation that claims to be celebrating freedom since 1947. What freedom are we celebrating? They can't marry who they want. Sorry. We can't marry who we want. I say we because why are there a community? Why are straight people not in this community? Why is there a community? Why can't there be? No community. How can you classify homosexuals as being different from us when we classify ourselves as heterosexuals and hetero means different? How can you classify homosexuals as being different from us when we society stress on the fact that everyone should be different? How can you classify homosexuals as being different from you and me? Now that we've read the end of this poem, I'd just like to include top 10 things one should know. One, in the words of Denise Broman, we are straight people, gender and sexuality, two different things. Two, being a part of the LGBT community doesn't make you any less of a human. Three, being straight doesn't make you any more of a human. Four, don't say you believe in hashtag pride and still call your friend gay for wearing pink. Five, don't say you believe in hashtag pride and still call your friend a lesbian because she doesn't like anyone. Six, don't say you believe in hashtag pride just because everyone else does. Seven, believe in hashtag pride because you want to. Eight, believe in hashtag pride because you are proud. Nine, believe in hashtag pride so it's not just a hashtag anymore. Ten, say hashtag pride without the hashtag because it's not a trend. Pride. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so this is actually this this tradition. Now you, I have, uh, I mean, given you a couple of videos. Uh, of, yeah. So this this tradition actually started. Uh, I think uh, it, in in the. Uh, in the early 50s, yeah, in the early 50s in the United States. And they started, they, when they started realizing that poetry comes not from uh, this, this so-called images or metaphors or something, or there are some poems which, uh, which of course, which are, goes beyond, goes beyond the, the traditional structures of this, uh, uh, this academician, what the academician taught us. But it has it has much more to do with with your sound pattern and vocal cord and how you deliver poems and how what are the political situations that you you express a poetry and uh, that that it comes from a and and believe me it's not so easy actually 
to to write this kind of forms because it is not that they have they come to a mic and then automatically they talk believe me tech talks are not so easy it needs really needs a uh, what is it called a uh, Uh, a, a big uh, practice before we we go on to the to talk about uh, a particular talk about a particular subject it's almost like mix with talk and poetry and it's either you can maybe some people can can think that it is not just just poetry yes it is it is actually it's a mix of everything because now we are living in in such a world that you cannot place a particular thing in in just one shelf it is really difficult because everything is mixed politics social cultural and everything is we are not living in a um, in a monolithic world and now experiencing quite a number of problems and the issues has been scattered and this idea of scattered realities go comes together in poetry and we uh, yeah uh, so quite a number of poets are making their forms in in these ways so uh using technology yeah so shall we uh, wind up i think there are a couple of hands they have raised hands so uh should we move on to that okay we can move on to the questions session yeah. who's taking over ankita who's taking over thank you so much sir for your valuable insight so with that we'll go ahead into our question and answer session it's open now questions whoever you want to ask something this one anybody has any questions hello uh, hello arnab uh, hello sir hello so, yeah. uh, yes uh, uh, sir actually uh, it was uh, first of all it was a very mesmerizing session uh, and uh, actually i have no question but an observation that i find uh, so inspiring that uh, to uh, the poetry actually mm, you uh, just uh, i have read your poems uh, that you have said uh, in social media and uh, also your book but uh, actually when it comes to performance uh, the juxtaposition of poetry and performance through uh, that we see the emotions that was uh, actually oozing out of the poetry uh, the emotions and actions that ultimately culminated to an artistic pleasure with the gestures that the uh, with the performance that we have seen the woman who was actually with the mudras or the gestures so that ultimately we have found that kind of artist artistic pleasure and i think uh, the context of rasa is uh, very much uh, uh, the that that artistic pleasure we can gain and the poetry become so vivid and spontaneous to us all when we see the performance so this is the audio visual effect we we, uh, we have read the poems and now when we see the performance and the musical elements that have been used so all make such a mesmerizing ambience and that i think the poems and the artistic pleasure of literature that uh, gain so much uh, powerful uh, it was so powerful for us uh, that we have enjoyed it really so we uh, expect more from you sir uh, uh, we have another session tomorrow so it was uh, so uh, so mesmerizing thank you sir yeah thank you thank you anna i think it is not just poetry but poetry in a new different form so uh, enjoying that kind of a form the the idea of uh, the process of enjoying uh, that kind of a new form will be totally different so we cannot expect 
like uh, when when you read a particular poem, definitely your your mind will because you know what you're going to do when when you read a particular poem. You know that you are reading a poem, so you uh, <clears throat> you will will get ready to read a poem, and your mind will get ready to read a poem. You start understanding. Okay, this is how the images should be conceived, but. in a visual form they are actually showing us the visual and the sound and the modulation of sound actually the modulation of sound is really important uh when uh, to to get that feel so uh, there are different aspects all these things are different aspects so it will work in a in a in a different way so it is don't it, it is not working in the traditional uh, what is called european modernist style of um, of uh, writing or understanding a poem it is uh, i think it is i mean something else yes, yes sir absolutely and if we apply these uh, forms or uh, these perspectives in our academia then the student will find uh, more interest uh, from exactly. literature right they, they are reading but when they see the performance so that reading and performance if will it is they go together then they will find more interest from them this is a nice suggestions from you sir so we are really inspired uh, so it will help us a lot in our class okay thank you sir okay well uh, hello am i audible yes professor sudha karies uh, i'm subrat re i hope uh, you might not be struggling to identify me i had a little bit of correspondence with you as well good morning uh, uh, sir yes actually you know uh, it is an absolute pleasure to be in touch with you and your poet in some way or other and uh, uh, one thing i'd like to first say a question in fact that you know at the introductory part of your of your lecture uh, at the very beginning of your lecture today you mentioned that you know uh, reading when you're talking about reading reading Uh, uh reading not as beautiful as real travel you pronounce this particular sentence you know that stop me now if i uh, uh draw your attention if i to draw your attention to the fact that you know uh is it possible that uh, the uh, a beautiful description of a sea might be more you know going through a beautiful description of a sea in a poetic form might be might be more self satisfying than you know having a real look of the sea, sea. because you know I, i was going through an article written by maxim gorky just a few weeks ago and he was mentioning that the uh, when i see a sea or sky all these things are very much known familiar to us you know cliche in to some extent you know but when we rediscovered them through the eyes of the poet with the color of poetry you know then they become more appealing to us so is it really possible to look at the physical world through the imaginative eyes of the poet and it might be proving more enjoyable how do you look at this issue uh i think uh you know what i wanted to say is that uh this this idea of poetry you know i i don't want to mix up the mix up with the real life of going to a sea because for a fisherman because it 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 differs from person to person maybe for a fisherman we uh, we got an opportunity to go to a sea recently with fisherman and for a fisherman it was because he is going the daily every day they are going the uh, to a sea every day and for us we are we are all tours like we once in a while we just go into the fisherman boat and go to see the full moon so in the sea so that is that is a totally different thing because why we are reading in the same way uh in the same way this uh, po- poetry poetry cannot be understood by everyone or felt by everyone and the the range of that feeling is also different so uh i think it is because uh, uh say for instance one one poet may be appealing to a particular person and the same poet may be not so uh, i mean appealing to an another one right so i think it all depends upon how we connect with that poetry or that real life experience i think uh, i don't know whether i have answered your question yes you know uh, you have addressed my concern about the issue yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. another point that i'd like to uh, draw attention to is that you know it is generally accepted or believed that uh, poetry is more a matter of you no know, private reading and it is more uh, like you know looking inward or <coughs> being in the uh, in the state of retirement you know to have the full flavor of poetry 
it is not meant for classroom teaching to a large extent you know but there is some academic compulsion that we have to face you know a poetry is to be decoded in front of the students you know in a classroom so uh, do you think that it it is going against the spirit of poetry itself that uh, poetry is being dissected it is being explained to some extent you know but poetry is better left for individual interpretation as you always feel you know so how how do you look at the issue uh, uh i think poetry is not just for individual interpretation even uh, say for instance um, when we look at the first century poems uh, like uh, early greek co roman poems they were written in terracotta and exhibited in front of temples <clears throat> so it is not just for a private uh, person's readings and uh, understanding of that particular thing but uh, the idea was totally different maybe for a community where it may be for a, a direction for that particular community or uh, maybe if you uh, recently i'm i'm translating on dolls on dolls poems and uh, andal is a uh, is a 9th century poet of south india i'm uh, trying to translate from tamil to malayalam and uh, andal in her poems actually it, she addresses uh, to not just a, a a particular person or or not just it's not i don't think it is for a for a close reading of a particular person but uh, she now we read now when and we read it in the 20th, 20th century now we have developed a kind of uh, idea that poetry should be understood in uh, uh, poetry should be understood from uh, i mean alone or just person to person yes of course it is right but i am what i am trying to say that this i mean by showing these videos this uh, ted talk uh, kind of poetry even like a crowd is sitting um, and and delivering a poem so that is that is of course the because when the crowds make some noise then when when a political comment uh, was, was uttered uh, by the poet then the crowd was uh, crowd howls that itself come as a as a feeling of a particular uh, reading of a poem okay so it is not just that you should you can understand it in a in a closed room and you should feel it there are some other kinds of poetry as well and as you said i think it is right when uh, when coming into the classroom discussions and uh, interpreting try to interpret a particular poem in in uh, by cutting its its wings in, and fixing it to a particular theory or particular pattern yes that is of course it is it is the but uh, what i think is that a text should demand its reading not the that we can read a text in in its own way but definitely a text because i i strongly believe that literature comes first than the reading and poetry comes first that though some some people still are trying to do the other way around that they uh, they started writing about a poem before the poet writes about that particular thing so uh, <clears throat> that is of course there in academia but i think literature comes first and then the text will demand such a reading then of course it is possible to to uh, take that text into a uh, into a different level so it is the role of the it is the role of a real critic is to is to decipher what he gets or what the society gets actually from a particular form there are several critics in our language and every language who who does it beautifully and they will take the particular uh, particular meaning out of the poem or maybe decipher something that is hidden maybe uh, i mean some meanings that the poet doesn't know and there are there are some some uh, ways of different ways of identifying ourselves with that poet maybe about with that particular text that maybe the poet doesn't know about that but we can it is very well possible that's what i said when the reader when the reader reads the poem the text should demand such a uh, uh such, such a new dimension uh yes it is true i do agree with you but it is also believe that poetry i what i feel you know poetry is nothing sort of piece of magic you know when a magic show is held you know with the spectators you know being present over there we try to just mostly enjoy it you know i mean yeah. when a piece of magic is displayed <laughs> exhibited you know then we try to focus on the you know on the joyful side of it you know how to enjoy it maximum there are some issues which might remain unsolved in case of magic show there might be some you know components of the magic uh, remain you know, uh, you know uh, uncodified or maybe you know secret you know but our focus is mainly focused 
on the joyful part of the magic show. So in the same way, if you look at poetry, poetry might not be so open. It might be a bit, you know, codified or mystic, like that, you know. But if we try to look at from the perspective of delight, you know, how much joy, delight we can get out of it, you know, like the magic show, then it might be a bit more easier to deal with poetry. Is it so? Uh, I think that that mysterious part was always there in, in, in poetry, that that uh, hidden side of the magic, because the 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 what makes a magic show on the stage beautiful is, of course, the, the hidden side. Just like the uh, that space inside a well makes the well a well. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So that that magic, the magic of poetry is is something that is that is hidden. If everything is exposed, there is nothing. Then Absolutely. there won't be any difference between prose and poetry, right? Absolutely. When magic dies. The secrecy dies, poetry may also have to die. <laughs> uh, I may have some other questions, but there might be some other speakers also. Yeah, yeah. They have no questions. So I should uh, give the opportunity to others. Thank you. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, sir, sir, uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, sir, another thing that uh, I should reflect now on the slam poetry that you have mentioned. Uh, and the perspectives of performance of the slam poetry uh, that we know the uh, according to the traditions we see that it is a postmodern performance uh, perform according to the performance theory it is a postmodern uh, in Bengal. Uh, in the suburbans of Bengal and also the uh, very uh, our folk we in our folk traditions we have some kind of performances which are very much related to this slam poetry so poetry performing uh, in in different perspectives in actually that the stage was not there but different dimensions of performance are there especially in the medieval age so long ago uh, though it is a postmodern venture but in our culture we had some traditions from the very medieval age uh, almost in the 16th century and 17th centuries hmm, starting from the mid 15th centuries there are some folk traditions that includes performance in poetry so usually the uh, the the poets they used to go to the uh, actually they were kind of minstrels and that performed their poetry in a ballad form to the others with the effect of music. So we had some certain traditions. So we can make a comparative study between the postmodern slam poetry and the medieval folk artistic performances in uh, Bengal. That is also, uh, uh, I think that will be a very interesting study, sir. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, Arnab, actually, th there are quite a number of that is why I wanted Priyanka to read uh, such a text in the, I mean, the initial part of my talk, because uh, that is exactly, I mean, uh, what she has read is almost like written in a, in a ballad kind of thing. I told you, right? So there are quite a number of studies happening in this way uh, across the world, and uh, of course, as you pointed it rightly. The, the roots of slam poetry comes uh, from all these things and the, the even the tone of um, uh, this this uh, rock music and everything say for instance maybe if you have any recordings of the 1930s uh, uh, rock and 1940s rock there is a kind of difference because from 30s to 40s uh, there is a big difference in the uh, say for instance uh, using the guitar because uh, the electric guitar came in the uh, was popular became popular in the 40s and earlier some of the some of such um, uh, experiments were done with uh, maybe a wooden uh, oh, whatever is called wooden instruments musical instruments but when it comes to 40s it became more electrical so the sound is different and also all these things came from the from the folk tradition only because the very idea of blues when you say blues and later uh, poets like Kulwak and several others started writing blues but you know the 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 it evolved the root of the word blues it is from 
this this black culture tradition black culture so india has a strong tradition of all these um, kind of uh, folklore musical forms and i think our poetry uh, i mean in india maybe if you are thinking of uh, such a new form definitely it can go back to this kind of forms other than bringing the western ideas of slamming it is it should be the of course that's why i said uh, it, it focuses on this poetry slamming and other other, other things focuses on the uh, on the cities but if it comes to a, a village then definitely i think uh, ideas from the uh, from the village tradition can be incorporated yeah, and delivered and performed it and it it'll make things more beautiful yes sir yes sir absolutely yeah. thank you sir yeah i think we have two questions in the chat box okay mm. yeah someone has asked what a uh, slam poetry actually means okay. uh <laughs> oh my god okay uh slam poetry uh i mean just now i i have showed you right i mean uh people will be there and you take a mic and then then you read there are there are multiple forms like open open mic events like i have participated once in spain uh in queensland uh in an open mic event they will give you time slots and you can read actually it is basically a poetry reading with maybe if you uh want some accompaniment of an instrument like a guitar or something or a drum you can you can use that and then you just uh chalk there are different different ways of uh different style so maybe definitely i i recommend uh you to uh actually go to google and then just type slam poetry and then you will you can see a lot of uh, forms and it is basically i mean highly political mostly another question and somebody ankita will you read there was another question i just uh, saw yes ma'am sir shujay vishwas is asking is that possible in this time to change our orbit if that possible how can we do by some we start please explain about your poem water and earth uh, i'm not sure i understood that question what is the orbit sir is that possible in this time to change our orbit if that possible how can we do by some we start and he asking to explain it from your poem what are an art oh okay my god hello i think sham sir can you look you may look at the chat box the question is there the chat okay 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 i'll i'll see just a minute uh, is it possible uh, in that time to change our orbit Okay. To change the, uh, can you explain? Uh, so join this was. What do you mean by it's possible that we can change the orbit? I didn't understand that part. Uh, I, I now I can see the. Uh, I can read the question, but I'm not sure I understood what you are uh, trying to say. Uh, I can read it. Is that possible? in that time to change our orbit uh, is that possible how can we do well from uh, i think you are you are talking about understanding a poem right that 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 orbit where is shuja shuja are you here yes ma'am okay can you please explain your question uh so uh, uh, there uh, she draws a new orbit for a moon yeah. that line uh, oh. draw a From new orbit okay 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 you are you are talking about that particular poem right poem yeah. that i yeah. should i should take that particular poem mm. what are that okay Yeah. Okay. With her fingers, she draws a new orbit for the moon. Okay. No, it is actually. Uh, 
basically it's unification uh unification of two people in a i'm i'm just talking about the primary uh, meaning and then she is actually waiting she wishes to uh, to call a, a sculpture from stone and wood and the poem goes like this and she wishes actually it is her expression she she as a woman and her own expression and then she meets her uh, i mean her uh, uh, her, her what is called her man and then they together with her fingers in with his fingers in hers they they become together with his fingers in words hers she draws a new orbit for the moon actually <clears throat> isn't it possible i'm 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 just asking isn't it possible to to uh to draw a new orbit for the moon is it that difficult because this I is the, so, <laughs> okay no i mean that is the magic of literature i think because to uh when you know like when milton uh, milton says uh, satan's shield is like the orbit of the moon mm -hmm. just now i was i was thinking of that imagery it's a it's a giant imagery and how can you imagine such a uh what is called uh, the orbit of the moon the size of an orbit of a moon and satan has that that shield so uh <clears throat> i think it is almost like that and uh then you you have a bigger world to to with his hands in her you will draw a new orbit for the moon it is you to to have a new a, a bigger world and to travel orbit is of course to to travel just like we said about kawafi it, it is a movement for the moon and they together they wanted to travel uh so it is just a literary image it, it depends yeah it depends upon you uh, uh who is that uh sunanda yeah Uh, actually it is not i who should tell you that you should always think about this particular thing it is it is in your hand every poem is in your hand definitely i have different different meanings but when i when i fix that particular meaning into something else it will be just fixed i don't want literature to be nailed on a on a particular wall never do that it is of course it it has different uh, different directions maybe it could have a, a sexual meaning it could have i mean a, a, a metaphysical meaning of course it is the not just a literal image for me maybe for for a person who wants it to be a literal image should feel it as a literal image uh, if i am allowed uh, may i come in uh, sham yeah yeah please yes uh, about this particular line you know taken from what on earth as i uh, read this line at least maybe you know 50 times you know when i was dealing with this poem one of the most beautiful poems written by you actually what i feel that uh, what is mentioned over there uh, that uh, the line is written just a minute line is written yes <clears throat> uh i'm having the poem in front of me I'm trying to get it uh, yes in the concluding lines you know uh, you seem to have exclusively turned to indian mythology when you referred to the drawing of a new orbit for the moon in line 29 according to hindu legend you know after the great flood when waters receded manu the only you know only human survivor uh, felt bitterly alone and to overcome his life of solitude he performed a you know, sacrifice with you know uh, uh, oblations of butter and sour milk to the lord of heaven after a year he found a woman named uh, shraddha coming down the waters and uh, they met with you you mentioned the line with his fingers in hers with his fingers in his heart so that line 28 and eventually became the 
uh, progenitors of the subsequent human race. The 10 children Manu and Sardha had between them include Ila and uh, Yakshavaku, who in the course of time would become the origin of the lunar and solar line of the dynasty. That's how I have tried to explain uh, the line you know, mm -hmm. that I found where, where uh, I was dealing with this poem. You know. Thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for that, that way of reading. Uh, I think um, in the beginning of my talk, I, what I wanted to suggest to you was that just, uh, I mean, uh, take a poem in its own way. Don't think that, or don't fix it into a particular simile or metaphor or, or something, but it has, it will it, let it take you into your own uh, understanding. So uh, I think you should focus on that particular aspect. Sir, so according to you, lovers have their own microcosm where they can do anything they want. Is it so? Yes, 100 percent. Yeah, because they live in their own world, right? And who can question that? That's a that's a totally different world, and nobody can question that because uh, there is a poem by Jacques Prévert. Uh, the French, the great French poet, prevail, and in that poem, <coughs> uh, lovers are, are standing on the on the balcony and they kiss, and people on the road just look at them and say that this is not fair, that's not good. They are they are showing things to us and blah 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 stuff. But lovers don't hear that. They are in their own way, their own world, and they don't care. Let the people talk. They don't care. Of course, they have their own world, their own identity, their own space. They are in that. Anyone else? Sir? Um, hello. hello, sir. I would like to ask that when someone writes any poetry or anything, uh, they have their own thoughts. And now when we read them, uh, we just uh, annotate or we just make ourselves explain or we just understand them by our own thoughts. So, uh, means while writing or while explaining, can I mean, is it possible that uh, both are correct, or is it uh, that if we uh, explain or if we understand it in a different way, then it's wrong or something like that? Yeah. So, it is almost like you make a lot of things from the same rice. That one day you can make something else. One day you can make another one, but and, and the, the next day you can make another one. Each for, with each reading, the same poem, the same thing, you will definitely it'll take you into a different, different, different levels. Maybe for your classroom uh, uh, expressions in the sense exam, examination, maybe you can write definitely what is written in the text because it uh, uh, deals with your marks and who is going to correct that. But in your personal reading, when you understand, but don't don't believe that that is literature. It is different. Literature definitely is a way of life. And again, uh, I strongly believe that. And it will take you into a different level. And each meaning, maybe just now our friend, uh, <coughs> my my friend Mr. Ray. Um, pointed out his reading of that particular poem and maybe tomorrow he may come up with a totally different idea just like how we read shakespeare in, in the contemporary um, times right because it is it is it is very much possible maybe uh, the post colonial maybe if you go uh, if you uh, read ania lupa or uh, or several critics they have taken shakespeare from its traditional victorian style because we are not able to read Shakespeare from his times. I mean, there are a few attempts like uh, Stephen Greenblatt and uh, other critics uh, try to do that from uh, looking at uh, Shakespeare from his own times. But actually, we as readers were not able to understand completely like what is uh, what was happening during that Shakespearean time. We can read literature only in, in our own place, our own time. We, we read literature by sitting in 
21st century and we are understanding that particular literature in from our own space our own limited or unlimited space though so it is you who have to decide whether you want to have a limited space or an unlimited space i always go for the second one okay sir thank you sir yeah so uh, somebody has asked a question uh, the person who writes the poem have uh, his own thoughts when writing and we interpret it our own different way okay yeah doesn't matter and only remain yeah that is i i think that is how literature works not necessarily you can understand it's not a jigsaw puzzle or something that you uh, or a crossword that you fix you fill all these answers and then you will get the meaning it's not like that you will get your own meaning that is how literature works that is how you uh, it will give you pleasure it will take you to a, to a totally different level of understanding and maybe the maybe you can read a critic so critics uh, definitely they they come up with their own ideas and thought and uh, to help you to read that particular work okay sir thank you <clears throat> Maybe Roland Barthes' uh, famous essay, uh, what is it, uh, about the death of the author, uh, shows the same idea of uh, he says that the author is dead and the text travels in its own way to different cultures. Say, for instance, now uh, yesterday, yesterday I took uh, a, a book to read the the same old Papillon that great novel. and now i am sure that i am going to i i uh, i have once read it and i again now i want to uh, read it again so i am sure that it is going to be uh, it's it's it gives me a it, it is going to give me a totally different experience i'll tell you another example uh, an example of arabian nights when i read this particular work arabian nights when i was in when i was uh, 9 or 10 it was different and when i read the same text uh by uh, when i was reading this particular text in when i was 9 then it became it was just a, a magical text and when i read the same text when i was uh, 15 then it became an erotic text and when i read the same text when uh, i was i was in 18 or 19 or 20 it became a magical realistic text and then when i was 25 i read the same book same story some of the stories and it became a cultural text so i think we keep on changing and maybe now i don't know what will happen when i i read that particular book now anyone else Any other questions? Do we have? We don't have any other questions. Here. Okay, fine. So I don't know. I, I, if I am allowed, I have a last question. Or shall we know? It's very difficult to to uh, to not to ask the questions. You know, when somebody like Sham is there in front of us. You know. Well, the uh, it is more of an observation, but of course there is a question as well. uh what i want to say that i believe that love of poetry is an infection love of poetry is an infection to which no one is permanently immune as i feel but uh, sham do you think that uh, that uh, uh, considering that many potential leaders have been inoculated against mm-hmm. poetry by the conditions of modern life so in this situation how to look at the future of poetry <coughs> Uh, are you are you trying to say that i mean many readers were not not so happy with the contemporary style of poetry no i don't think so actually uh, they are having the kind of life you know the complexities the problems the ills of modern life is so heavy upon them so how can they motivate themselves to go into the world of poetry or do they have anything special can they be motivated to go into the world the realm of poetry you know so they seem to be in a they seem to have been inoculated by the modern problems you know not to gain to the realm of poetry so how to look at yeah i think uh, 
because poetry survived several centuries and it will survive because people uh, i'm sure that even in the in the first century or second century or even in bc poetry the, the the poetry was never a popular thing only those who want poetry went to poetry poetry never poetry won't ask anybody to i mean to help me to survive i think even still now maybe we may think that the modern life and our uh, uh, i mean the busy schedule in the busy schedule poetry we are we are, we are going to ignore poetry i think there are still a few people just one or two people maybe in the entire world can hold it because it has a it has a long tradition and maybe uh, just like uh poetry from change from from terracotta it came to it became to leaf and then we started writing poetry in these palm leaves in kerala and then uh, it became paper it started appearing in these papers then uh, now it is on screen the 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 struct the the form changes of course the media the medium changes but it will it will always uh, it has already all, always survived and i'm sure that it will survive because that is why in the beginning of my talk i said poetry is of course a vaccine i wanted to tell you this poetry is of course a vaccine because vaccine for the new world and if we are running for vaccine getting vaccine for corona poetry is a vaccine for a uh, for the next culture actually after the corona we need to uh, we need to survive survive with love and love towards each other love with uh, i mean love of community and we are going to we are going to live together on the same world so definitely literature not just poetry art 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 definitely art is a art is a vaccine for the the next generation we need it thank you thank you so much it's so beautifully explained you know and we feel reassured you know with those words that they have pronounced you know that poetry must survive and uh, it is always you know reading your poetry gives us that that kind of pleasure you know now i feel that talking to you also gives us that kind of pleasure as well you know it is such a wonderful you know experience talking to you thank you so much thank you so much i'll wait up Any other questions? Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, my name is Anish. My name is Anish Shah. I'm a student of first semester. Uh, first, I want to thank you for the beautiful session. Uh, and my question is: uh, Do you think personally? I think uh, I'm questioning. But um, is there any existence of good poetry or bad poetry, or maybe good literature or bad literature? Because we often hear that, uh, yeah, that poetry is a very good one, or that is not of that much quality, and that poet is the greatest one because he has written many of the great poems like that, and there is so much uh, awards or like that. But uh, what I feel that when anyone is writing any literature, he is just writing with his own emotions and own feelings. and like that so uh if it is a uh, right or it is justified to um just judge uh, with one or with one with another uh and judge that it is good and it is bad it is greater than that one it is right yeah isha isha and i think there is no harm in judging a poem or uh, judging a book of art because it is our right because we are living in a democratic country and if we say judging is wrong then we are going to be fascists so never i don't think that we uh, i mean we should not judge a work of art because it is our our right to uh, to live in this world live in this country and to judge what a, a work of art is no harm in it but at the same time upon the conviction that maybe for someone else it is good maybe my what i write may not be uh, appealing to a particular person but definitely maybe to someone else so 
uh, we cannot completely ignore a particular uh, work of art because it has its own space but still i have my own reservations i also judge i i i, I think that my judgment is the is the last thing because i have the right but at the same time we should respect what others think as well there is there is of course a kind of uh, i also think that okay i mean that poem is really bad but upon the notion that maybe someone else will enjoy it thank you sir uh, like uh, yeah, we have often seen that uh, in some era some poetry sir never appreciated like metaphysical poets were not appreciated in their era but uh, after eliot uh, uh, wrote his famous essay uh, they were appreciated very much and uh, like this happens so uh, yeah as you have told that uh, we must we, ca we should uh, we can judge but we should uh, um, also honor another's choice Let's, exactly uh, exactly that is why uh, i think ripon da dali uh said yes nothing is absolutely good or bad we always have a have a choice and do you think it is beautiful to have choices that different poets around us and we can from my uh, my library maybe one day i will i, I may love kalidasa's poems and uh, the next day maybe yahuda misha i can take or vasco popa or from strand from and whomsoever it is and uh, i don't collect uh, or some malayalam poets well openly and we have we have choices so that is always beautiful but one thing i am sure you should read it and then make your choice don't just just, just push them down and i have seen people clear i mean uh, condemning tagore or mahatma gandhi without reading them i have i have seen several several people saying that okay i mean uh, gandhi is, is i mean that i don't like gandhi because i mean yes it turns up maybe gandhi of course i am not defending gandhi or tagu uh, there are people who doesn't like them or wanted to be i mean uh, them uh, but at the same time you should read them and then you should judge in your own ways you should understand try to understand what you have gained what you can gain from that particular uh person from that particular text and then it is your choice to uh to to approve them or not to approve them. nobody will no. nobody will question you if you if you burn a book of mahatma gandhi it's not like in the currency you can definitely burn but please read it and you should check whether that book should be burned or not or kept it in your library so we should uh, read we can judge and we must uh, honor another one's choice right yes absolutely thank you sir anyone else yes? <clears throat> okay i think we can wind up thank you sir again for your valuable time and thank you all for participating to this lecture we hope to see you again on the second day of this lecture series tomorrow from 11:30 am see you tomorrow thank you thank you okay thank you